Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. It is time for another update video. Yes, I know, I know you guys have been wanting to see this forever, and I apologize, it's been way too long. Uh, this has gone off too long, I have a ton of projects, I don't even know where to really begin, honestly. It's been that long, I didn't even realize how long it was until I saw my most recent update video was last year around Christmas time, it's pretty bad. So I apologize for that, so I'm going to try to make up for some stuff here. i got a bunch of stuff to show you guys, I've been obviously keeping busy. I've been pre-ordering like a madman, just because Atherton especially has been putting out so much cool stuff that I've been trying to stock up. Been selling a lot of stuff, doing stuff for customers, you know, the usual, the whole kind of thing there. And of course I've been very busy at work, so that kind of pulls me away from models. I'm not doing modeling as much anymore either, just because I don't try to burn myself out on it. So when I work on models, it's a very short amount of time, but I still have a lot of stuff to show. And again, I have a ton more models to show later down the road, so I'm going to be busy for a while. But I want to go ahead and start with uh, some cars I've been working on here off and on and again uh, I got a ton more cars like I said Athens has just been putting out some killer stuff lately uh, so I got a ton of stuff to show but anyway we'll go ahead and get started here I've been working on updating some older models that I have and kind of just cycling through stuff deciding what I want to keep what I want to sell to make room for new stuff some of these cars I've been able to you know just decided I wanted to save because they were worth kind of keeping and in this case I have some eerie uh, eerie commercial box cars that I've had for quite a while now these are Atlas models, older run uh, Atlas models, that I went back and added some further details to, like these all are upgraded to the new KD lower shelf couplers that I modify with uh, from double shelf couplers, and I basically went back and updated the graffiti on a lot of these cars, because these cars over time have gotten a lot of graffiti, I've done some patching, updated some safety striping, just stuff like that, finished uh, some weathering, touched up weathering, added the safety stripe, stuff like that. Uh, this one has some really nice graffiti, as you can see, I've done some hand-painted stuff based on some photos, so it looks really sweet. And again, you can see all the patching and stuff like that, and it has the updated uh, couplers. And on the uh, X panels on the roofs of these cars, they're painted. I don't know why they do that, but anyway, it's like a rusty color, so I've gone and added that to these cars as well. So here's the first one here, this is a uh, EEC 5673, a nice car that I was able to basically go back and, you know, update and get it updated so that it looks nice and can fit with all of my more modern stuff now so it looks pretty good same thing with the 5624 here uh, just updated it a little bit got the new weathering on the roof um, just did some uh, new graffiti updated things just kind of freshened it up a little bit you know what I mean so it looks pretty good and these are pretty much ready to go back in service this is some more of the original graffiti that I had on it I've painted a you know many years ago now it's been well, quite a while. I mean, I've had these cars, like I said, for quite a few years now, so it's good to kind of get these finished. But again, this one, again, has the uh, updated couplers, and these are really nicely detailed cars, as you can see. So they're worth keeping uh, for the money, especially. So they're ready to go. Go back in my fleet here, uh, ready for a couple more years of service. So those are the two cars I just recently updated. Um, I got a couple of new releases as well, uh, and I, again, have a, a collection of cars that I told you guys about a while back, too, where a friend of mine was getting out of the hobby, and he sold me a bunch of models dirt cheap. So I got a BLMA flat car off of him, and I got an Atlas models flat car off of him. So as you can see, the first one I got is a TZPR. It's a kind of a flat car, basic flat car here. So in this particular case, it was already patched from the factory. It's a pretty rare model, so all I had to do was add safety striping to it, some rust spots, some weathering, a couple washes, and just get it grimed up based on prototype photos, grimed up the wheels and everything like that. On the deck here, I just did some dry brushing, some chalk powder weathering and everything, and then I added some cross ties to the deck to represent kind of a car that maybe have been hauling some sort of material like piping or something across the deck, so it still has these cross brace pieces on the top. And again, just some minor upgrades, put new couplers, like uh, put new KDs on it. Uh, it still needs coupler bars and air hoses, but it's a work in project progress, but it's a nice little flat car to have, as you can see, it's a really nice model. Uh, for the price. Again, this is, I think is an Atlas Trainman car. It's a really old Atlas Trainman car. Uh, but that's just one car I've been working on. So that's an updated kind of a flat car. I need to add more flat cars to my fleet, so that's why I got it. This BLMA car is really nice. This is a 89 foot flat car uh, for pipe service, as you can see. And so this is a really nicely detailed model. So I went ahead and did some washes, grimed it up quite a bit, tried to do the kick up on the underbody. We can see the kind of the kick up spray on the wheels. It's a really nice car, so I really wanted to try to, uh, you know, show that in a way that I could. Of course, it's got the safety stripes, I've created the safety stripes. Got all the nice grime weathering, which I did with an airbrush, washes, built it up in layers until I got, uh, was pretty happy with it. Standard weathering on the wheels. The deck is nicely scraped up. You can see it's a nice orange oxidized tint color. It's not showing up very well in the camera, but it's a nice color. But you can see all the fine scrapes and scratches on the deck there. Uh, this car still needs a load. I haven't decided what to put on it yet. 
Um, but I'll get to it eventually. It's just right now, it's just kind of an unloaded flat car. I can throw in a manifest. And again, it's a nice car. It has all the uh, really nice details on the end. So it's a good car by BLMA. It's a shame BLMA is out of uh, business now and Atlas got the stuff. But I mean, what do you do? So it's one car. I'll definitely just get one. It's a long car, so it takes up a lot of room. But it's still a nice model, so I did my best with it and just weathered it up. This, uh, this side here has some of the hand-painted graffiti. I did that with a paint pen. And again, there's the safety striping, a little bit of the looks of the weathering there. You can see the kick-up spray and everything. I just kind of modeled on the center beam there of the car. So that's a really cool effect. But there's a basic flat car there I did. for a BL It's a BLMA flat car again. So those are both really, really nice cars that I have. Go ahead and carefully move those out of the way. Um, moving on, I got an exact rail box car. This is one I've had in my collection for a little while now that I actually just recently finished. And it was featured on my Westbrook switching video, if you guys remember that video of my uh, HLC X6300 switching some trash cars. This car was just done uh, when I made that video. So essentially what I did with this car, again it's an exact rail uh, waffle side box car. I essentially just took some washes, built them up in gradual layers on the sides to build up all the grime in between the panels. Kind of cleaned up the ray surfaces a little bit. Then I went back and added the graffiti. I kind of did some of the patching and some of the mismatch coloring like on the wood panels on these cars. On the doors, a little bit of touch up paneling. And this one has the uh, three different sets of safety striping on it. You guys can see it has the old school DOT stripes, the red and white stripes, which I made from reflective tape. It's got the beat up, chip it away, uh, peeling and chipping old stripes there, and then kind of rusting away, and then you can see they're all just kind of beat up. It's important to weather the stripes on these kinds of cars like this, because you do see a lot of beat up stripes on cars like this, but there's a good side with the graffiti. Uh, some really nice weathering on the trucks there, as you can see on the ends as well. These Xactro cars are, again, really nice. You can see I did the kick-up spray. A really fine kick-up spray on the end there. And then on this side, a little bit simpler, just a little bit of your basic graffiti uh, to keep it simple, but still nice. You guys can see all that, all the patching, the set of safety stripes, you guys can see all the rust streaks and everything down the sides. So it's a really simple but really nice looking car that I did, uh, representing a Buffalo Pittsburgh uh, owned box car. Now the roof is my favorite part on this car, you guys can see I tried to model some of the rust pitting. These waffle side boxcars have some really unique pitting on the roof, so I tried to represent that here with some acrylics. So I started with acrylics, did the pitting first, and then I went back and did some oils and kind of washed it out and then spread it out with a wet brush. And then I just went back and did some pitting and kind of scratched away at it a little bit. I can kind of get a better aerial view if I take that thing off the camera. I'm not, not really liking the lighting right now, but you guys can kind of see that roof weathering, so it looks really good. And you see again that kind of weathering a lot in these waffle side box cars. So I really tried to make that look good on this car. And it turned out really nice. I'm really happy with it. So that's the exact real car that I have, the BR50294, custom weathered. So it looks really good. It's another one of my favorite box cars. Alright, so this uh, these next two cars I'll go ahead and show. Uh, first off, I got an updated Hubert's car. Now these are pretty rare, these are pretty hard to find. These are the older TTX cars. I forget who these are built by, but it's a very unique design. Uh, these cars are pretty crude out of the box, so I had to do quite a bit of work to them. And I, again, I did this car last year and I just haven't gotten around to showing it, so I apologize for that. But we'll go ahead and show it here. So anyway, with this car, I had to do some detail upgrades to the basic Hubert's car. And the big things I had to do was add the coupler lift bars, the air hoses, and the lower shelf, uh, extended coupler you can see there so I had to add these parts the air hoses are by high tech so they're the rubber ones they are pretty durable the coupler lift bar and bracket is by I believe Plano they make the uh, several different styles of these modern coupler lift bars which are photo etched parts so they work really nice for this car um, so I added these parts to this car first and then I did some basic washes grimes and everything like that some chalk and everything to kind of model the rust these cars are pretty dirty uh, considering they have a couple of years and again you can see they got some, uh, it's picked up a, uh, quite a bit of graffiti over time, and again, this is all just hand-painted, hand-drawn graffiti based on prototype photos of the real car. So you can see all that there, it looks really, really nice. Some nice weathering on the trucks as well. On the door, you can see the rust and everything. And then I put the safety striping over that common thing. They usually just take the safety tape and put it right over the old graffiti. And this one has some patching. You can see they repatched the number there. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but it is a different yellow. So that looks really sweet. So it's renumbered. Really nice. So on this side, pretty much the same. This side has a, the better graffiti, in my opinion. You can see it has some um, work by Powder and Vespa. Looks really nice. Again, some nice detail shots of the graffiti here. You guys can kind of see that. 
and then the patching, the safety striping, a little bit of the grime. On this top corner of the car, you can see I kind of modeled some graffiti that scraped off, which is pretty cool. That's another thing I'm going to start doing a little bit more of on these cars. Just a light fade on the logos and stuff like that. Uh, some random graffiti. Again, notice the detail parts. It makes the car look a lot better. And just some other kind of random graffiti where it kind of scraped off on the top there. You see they uh, put the new data board on this car as well, or the graffiti. Got the safety stripes over the graffiti and some, again, fine drawn tags there. So it's a really nice car. Uh, and then the roof, it's just standard pitting. Uh, some washes to kind of dull down the metal first, and then I put my grime washes over it, and then basically did just the simple pitting. Uh, and that's how I did the uh, effects on this car. So very simple, basically just weathered with washes. Uh, so I've been weathering like a lot of cars like this with just basic washes. I find it's a really nice way to build up what uh, to get what you want. So this car is basically weathered entirely with washes. That is how I did this. So it's a really nice car. It's another really nicely upgraded car. So it's an older uh, Hubert CTX car. Kind of a rare model, but I'm really happy I got one of these. I might get more in the future. We'll see. All right, so this last car I want to show here is one that has an interesting side story. Uh, these are a special run of cars that Atherton announced. Oops, popped a little part off there. There we go. Um, this is a special run of cars Atherton announced last year, and this is one of the first cars they did in the Prime for Grime series, if you recall. They did and announced that they were going to do last April, around this time actually, last year. And, of course, uh, I'm a big fan of the PCNF cars, and when I saw that they were going to do this patch job on this car, I obviously was stoked. So I pre-ordered this car, along with two other roads that they were offering in the PCNF series. And, long story short, when the pre-order came, I didn't get this car. For some reason, I didn't. I pre-ordered it through a friend of mine through his new hobby shop that he had just started, and I got two of my other cars that I ordered, but I didn't get this one. Long story short, Ather never sent me this car, so I ended up not getting this car, and it really sucked. So, obviously, this was the one I really wanted. So, long story short, I ended up having to go on a, a searching spree trying to find this car, and of course, it's the one that everybody else wanted, so it pretty much sold out within a month of them announcing it, and the cars that did get out of Ather that didn't get pre-ordered went to all these other places and were sold off probably almost immediately so I went through several different hobby shops here in the US and Canada found two that had the car ordered it through them and they both basically had the same thing where they were like two weeks later oh we don't actually have the car can't sell it to you sorry and they canceled the order so then I was sitting there like well I guess I'm screwed then so you know obviously felt really bad about that I really wanted this car and I was basically about ready to give up and a friend of mine turned around and graciously offered to sell me his that he had gotten in exchange for some weathering work. So a big thanks to my buddy, he was able to send it to me and that's how I got this car. So, dumb story there, that's the short version of it. I can tell you some more details, but I'll save it for another story, I guess. Anyway, here it is, the SP698307, a really nice model and you can see why I really wanted it. It's an absolutely cool looking patch, I mean it's so awesome looking. Anyway. How I basically went about modeling this car, Atherin obviously pre-faded and patched the car for me. All I had to do here was basically what I wanted to do. I wanted to preserve the patching and keep all this clean, so what I did when I got the car, I masked off all the dulled parts, gloss coated the uh, patches, and then masked over the patches, and then dull coated over the uh, uh, areas I wanted to weather. So it was quite a bit of work there and a lot of masking to do this. And then I was able to proceed to do all the grime washes, finish the patching like the rust, uh, the rust patches here on the door stops and the gray patch there, finish the graffiti and everything else. So it's just weather with some light washes. You can see the panel lines are enhanced there. Did some pitting and such on the roof. So you got the uh, heavy washes and then some pitting. And then just some prototype graffiti here based on uh, photos of the real car, of course. There's only one side pictured so I just had to kind of eyeball the other side but there's the prototype side here on the ends you guys can see the really nice kick up effects the grime and everything modeled there so this is this is the kick up spray with the uh, splatter and splashes and all the grime works some mud splatter the safety stripes were added on that end as well and there's a look at the patching and then on this side the yeah, basically again the same method masked off the patches gloss coated those dull coated the uh, non-patched areas and then did the grime work uh, to basically create the effects that you see on this car. So it's a really neat model. I'm really glad I got it. It was a hell of a pain in the ass to get, but there it is, the PCF car. So I'm really glad. I, this is one of my favorite models right now. I absolutely love these cars, and it's a great thing Atherin's doing, offering these pre-patched cars to the uh, general models. As long as they don't jip you on your pre-order, you're fine. But there's the SP698307. We're going to go ahead and move on to some next cars here in the next uh, section, part two.